um, I'm going I'm going to start enabling the multiple sharing capability. Okay. Should I start now, sir? Ah, uh, you can start already. Uh, do I need to show the one from the first week? What was the insight first? Insight analysis. Ah, uh, no, no more. It's it really no more. Just for longer presentation. It's just really for uh, the week three submission. Okay. Okay, sir. Wait. Okay, so this is my um, project site. It's in Binondo. Uh, it's around 630 square meters. And I wait lang. Mali yata ito. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay. Mm. This is the massing model. Uh, we can see that the water is very close to the site and there's a bridge. It's a pedestrian bridge just in front of the site. So given that, uh, that pedestrian traffic would be a lot in front of the site. You know, Andor, right? Yes, sir. It's in the middle of Binondo, yung pinakamaraming tao. So it's very busy. This is the section. I made it perspective para mas makita yung roads, the curve, and the bridge. Okay. This is the sun carving. So I picked three, three times throughout the day. It's 8, 11, and 2 p.m. So this is 8, 8 a.m. So your winter solstice, it's the best time to, uh, to start planting my plants, which is cannabis. So given that, it has the largest opening on the side, which is this box. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's 8 o'clock. 11 o'clock, so it's an opening here. And then, 2 o'clock here. You can notice that this, this particular shape is triangle. Because I didn't want direct light getting in the side. So, this plane, uh, I flipped it 45 degrees so that it reflects the light. Uh, reflects the light inside. Tapos. This is a three, 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 uh, sun carvings combined together. And I get this model. So we can also notice that uh, this part is covered because inside there's a building on the side. So that's a parameter that I need to go through. And also my skyscraper, I need on skyscraper, high rise building here. That's why using this opening, it's the only time that May full light side. And this is the wind cir circulation. This street is a very tight street uh, surrounded by high rises. So the downwind from the high rises go through here onto the the estero. So given that, uh, yung sun carving, it catches the wind through its through the front onto the back. 
same goes to the back and the side. So this is the actual model. <clears throat> this is how the light goes through the top going to the ground floor. Also here. This is the top view, some other views. And And so research on cannabis has two types. So there's a male and female. So the male pollinates and the female flowers. So why is this important? It's because the flowers are the main source of resin and oil that's we're, that we're going to use later on. And the leaves contain small amounts since the flowers has the most psychoactive resin and oil. In the cold climates, what grows is mostly hemp. So hemp is widely used for decades already as an industrial material since it's very strong and long. It's also known as abaca in the Philippines. It's Manila hemp. And then in warmer climates, it's where psychoactive cannabis grows. So there's three main types, sativa, indica, and ruderalis. Sativa is the one that grows in the warmer climates. So in the Philippines, I'm guessing this grows more. But then it's listed as a, a dangerous drug, so it's illegal. Uh, given that, indica is smaller, so ma illegal don. They probably plant this one indoors para mas tago. And ruderalis goes the fastest. So what people do is they mix breeds to make the best outcome they, they want. So Ruderalis mixed with Sativa is going to be growing tall but fast. So Indica with Ruderalis goes small but fast. Tapos, indica has the densest buds. So why is this thing important? Uh, actually, it's not very important now since these three breeds are so interbred together that we don't know which is which already. It might look indica, but it has sativa effects or ruderalis effects. And we can't actually test if uh, it's indica or what since we don't have purebred samples of sativa, indica, or ruderalis. So that's a challenge we have to go over. So what are the psychoactive chemicals present in them? So THC, THC is basically the one that makes you high. Uh, it's used as, uh, tell me recreational drug so we don't want that much cbd though is the one that's anti anti anxiety it has relaxing effect fighting seizures it also treats cancer so if we want medical cannabis getting cbd is the way to go so medical strains there are Low THC, high CBD, that's the one we want to treat seizures and anti-anxiety. So to plant these, there are four mediums that we can apply. It's soil, soilless mix, hydroponics, and aquaponics. And hydroponics uh, yields the best effects. 
So growing it, germination, vegetative stage, flowering, and harvest and cure. Uh, like I said, the time to grow them is very uh, iba iba since it's the breeds. So it's 48 weeks, 8 to 6 months. It's very broad. Same goes to the height of the plant. It ranges from 0.2 meters to 4 meters depending on the breed, the hybrid breed. It's important to note that uh, in the flowering stage, males are removed to yield the best buds or flowers. Also, uh, during, har during harvest, it needs to be dried for four to 10 days. So in the architectural, I need to suggest uh, a space for drying the buds. You know. That's all. Okay. Would you have any um experimentation or idea with this one to architecture? Uh I don't have a party yet since I didn't know we needed to do that yet. Because this is I, I was falling really scared. But uh, sa idea ko, I just need to allocate spaces na pwede yung sativa plant. So it's around 3 to 4 meters since it has the mo most what is CBD. The, what is the 3 to 4 meters? Sativa. Uh, okay. What at the height? Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah, these are my few comments, no? So, uh, since we don't, have, we don't have a party yet, it's still, uh, in a way, voluntary. And uh, at this stage, um, I am just going to reiterate what I said about the sand carving before. It's not the actual form. I wish it's the final form already uh, because it, you know, it looks very interesting. But uh, the form will still develop according to the needs of the typology of your program. Okay, so uh, okay. so when it comes to the plant, you need to identify the areas um, of the building where you're going to plant it on, and at the same time, how many, how much. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, how much plant are you going to use? How much of the plant? Is it going to be just the leaves, etc.? So uh, you need to identify those inf those uh, information. Wait lang, let me just fix the... Uh, so, and that given area, let's say it's a one, one square meter, how much leaves can you harvest? You need to identify those things. Like I, even though you don't have a party yet, this I think this applies for everyone, especially if you're treating the plant as a produce. You need to identify like the, the yield per, per square meter, uh, how many kilos of that. And then if you're saying that this will produce in four to eight weeks, then probably you can experiment in terms of the architecture or form Let's say one area is for this week, one area is for this week, and the other the area is, uh, is uh, another time for harvesting. So in a way, the entire building is uh, evolving. Evolving. Yeah, the, the, there are, in, in a weekly basis, the look of the, the building changes because some areas are being harvested, some areas are blooming, etc. But you need to identify those information. So even without the idea of how to do the party, somehow you can provide that information already. And that's why I was very uh, particular about you guys producing a more visual presentation. For example, uh, you were referring to, uh, um, can you go to slide number five, I think? 
ano no, the other one. Yan, yan, uh, six. Six. It's like you were talking about four to six weeks. You know, you can make it uh, something visual. You know, th- you know what I mean? Like probably this, this series of pods is uh, week one, series of pods week two, uh, and so on and so forth. So that, uh, so that uh, you can sort of organize the time, the times of uh, harvest, and uh, because we're just going to treat the entire thing as a, as a, as a one harvest uh, time, then uh, it will be. You will you will have a dead period because you don't have a produce. You know what I mean? But also. That also raises the question: If uh, this plant grows a certain season of the year, okay? Because uh, the, the the things that I've been talking about by uh, by uh, by doing an interval of harvesting might not be applicable if they only grow during the winter season or the summer season. Do you know what I mean? So you need to identify those things. And then um, if you really want to use the sun carving, and then when you, and like I said, while it's not final yet, at least you can already identify the sides where to put the, let's say, uh, let's say a month one harvest, month two harvest. You know, you can create those terminologies. You can create those jargon. Um, can you imagine it with the form? Let's say it's a box. One side is month one harvest. Another side is month two harvest. Do you get it? So you're already annotating based on how you're going to use the building. If it's applicable to um, to how the cannabis grows. If you're going to make an interval between harvest. Do you follow, Lance? Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, you need to you really need to identify like how much you can produce in one square meter, and then um, and your research okay. can stop that. For example, you go to uh, the harvest and cure. So uh, that will already might dictate the program of your building. Is it a wellness facility, and uh, and probably the method of harvesting and the pro- the method of curing can also dictate the program of the building as well. So, yung sa regarding sa space, uh, in one square meter, it's actually indefinite. So, since like you said, walang proper regulation or there's no proper size it's all different it's kasi nag hybrid hybrid lahat so is it okay if i just guess uh, i'm sure there's a range uh there's um, a range for that don't don't guess it kasi think of it like some thesis if you're just going to guess a number for it but what you can do is you can find uh source of information that you can um derive your number from so for example na isip ko sa US maraming mga cannabis companies and um maybe they disclose how many square meters they have they disclose how much material or how much resource they are able to produce and sell so maybe you can compete from that for example um i think Tilri ata yung pangalan ng isang ano company so like you can check them out and then, okay, how many square meters worth of plantation do they have and how much um, how much cannabis do they produce in a year? Yung mga ganong things and just find mga listed cannabis companies because they usually disclose those information for investors. And um, yeah, I think that's a, that's one way of doing so. Like for example, merong mga banana dito and then hindi sila sure gano'ng kadaming banana si meron. You know, punta ka sa may isang banana company, you know, like just research about them, di ba? They have plantations worth sabi natin gento hectares and then they produce gentong tons of banana. So if, you know, proportion, di ba? Ratio and proportion, 
you can guess in your square meters kung ilan yung ilang gaano kadaming bananas yung magagawa mo. So does that make sense? Yes. Yo, pwede ganun, sir. Pwede ka mag yes. Yes. pwede yes. ganun yung way of computing mo. So it is here still outside. No, she's inside already. Yeah, she's inside already. So anyway, uh you were saying, Kyle, are you done? Yeah, yung ratio and proportion na lang from existing data, which I think he could do if he is able to find the information about that. Let me share with everyone what we do in Design 7. When, when you are going to design a skyscraper, what we did was um, when we expect a costing from the student, um, there are available information about the cost of the developments in Metro Manila. Let's say a certain building uh, costs about a certain million or billion or trillion, whatever. And then uh, basically we divide it per square meter of the of the total area of the building. You get it? So there are ways to find out how to, to do that, to know the per square meter. So so what the, the student will do is just compute for the total square meter of the entire building and then because uh, the student was able to find out, let's say, the cost of uh, five condominiums, then they will just average it. You get it? But of course, the, the condominium, condominiums have to be categorized as well. If they are all high end, then definitely the cost per square meter will be different. And then, uh, so um, so she did they base that cost on the existing uh, published cost of the building. So what you can do, since if you don't have any information about the cannabis uh, plant, um, although I'm, I'm a little confused about the information you said when it's all mixed, uh, I mean, it's still a plant. I mean, I don't think you need to, I think uh, you need to take this as a, as a collective harvest. Um, I don't know if what you meant by that because you were planning to collect or harvest it per species, I think that will be difficult. So, uh, uh, no, naman. I, so, I meant, uh, kunare, uh, pag dog, shih tzu, tas nag bulldog, nag mix, yun, sobrang mix na, like, there's hundreds of so, species. So, how do you harvest this thing? Is it uh, per species or no? Because you don't have no. that information yet. Oh, no. Then, then, you have that answer already, even if it's collective, then uh, uh, you can generalize it. Uh, just like my condominium comparison, um, probably you can use other plants um, that has the same density, that has the same uh, properties, etc. And uh, okay. I don't think it should be difficult to, to, to compare. You get it? So there are ways to do it. Um, and then you can actually uh, include that in the presentation by saying that because of the lack of uh, available information, I did this uh, so that I can have a more rational uh, rational approach to, uh, to the computation of the harvest and yield. You get it? Yes, sir. Let me share something about the practice. Whenever there's a potential client that approaches me, I ask for, well, aside from the, the design that they're looking for, I ask for their, uh, the spaces, the wish list. And then I, I make an area tabulation already, an assumption based on the standards that I know. And that will be the basis of my, of my design fee because normally a client would just say, oh, I want a 3,000 square meter house, etc." And and then um, and then um, you just provide the uh, your fee based on that square meter, based on the project uh, uh, project construction cost. And if, if you're the client, you may have the impression that you're just guessing the the rate. But I provide the area tabulation just so you know I can have a detailed, um, in a way, a detailed. Uh, um, information about where I got my total square meters. Yeah, just to be fair with the clients, it's the same process uh, that uh, we are demanding from, uh, from this project. 
Okay, guys, so that you can have that intuition, you can apply it in your real life situation and practice. So, uh, given even if you don't have the available information, you need to be resourceful. You get it? Especially now, it's about the pandemic. So you need to be a little creative and find ways to um, to find a solution. You get oh, it? It's funny because last night I was watching Independence Day Netflix, The Resurgence, etc. Uh, there's this one guy who's very intelligent uh, by the book. And then this one guy is very adventurous. And... Um, but of course, the heroic thing is to, to always find an alternative. So uh, it's not always uh, by the book. It's always finding other alternative solutions. Sometimes it will also lead to something innovative. All right? Uh, the, the, the section, the side section is actually very good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Thank I like it a lot, yeah. Thank you. Yung, ano, um, I also like yung documentation mo nung model. Yung sa site model, I just don't like the fourth picture kasi yung may kutina. It could have been consistent with the black background. But yung ibang site model pictures mo yan, those are very nicely done. Even the ones with the sky, I really like yung documentation mo nun. So what and was the, the drone footage about? Really good. Uh, ol- ola yun. <laughs> Aesthetic lang, sir. Ah, but thank you. I thought you were included in the presentation. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, thanks, Lance. But uh, what I advise is that yeah. you continue this uh, based on my advice. Don't wait for my specific requirements. You know, yeah. I'm, also, I'm also seeing it how you're going to. Uh, I'm, going, I'm also looking at your attitude towards your project, how invested you are in the development of this idea. Okay? Yeah, if you want to develop it kagad, are you eager to develop it? In your... Oh, because there's a... Yeah. There's a tendency, which I understand. I was a student before. Um, that uh, you just basically tick the boxes and that's good enough for you. Even, even if you excel, even if you're really good at it, but I, I'm more impressed and I think the student will do better when they're practicing when I see the initiative comes from the interest and the passion they put into the project. So, uh, so uh, and you may say, oh, I'm unsure about what to do, etc. We also encourage experimentation. It's okay to make mistakes and it's part of the process. Okay. Wala naisipin niyo din yan pag magpo-propose kayo sa may client. You're not sure if they're going to like it. <laughs> diba? You go all out on what you want to do that you believe is, diba? Is the solution. So, ayun. Yan lang. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, okay. So, again, yeah, thank you Lance. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you Cooks. Sure, no problem. Okay, amongst the, the girls who opted to present today, who wants to go first? Let's go with the, ano muna pala, Julian. Share for sale. And then we go to Leia. Julian? Where's Julian? Is he here? Awala. Ah, he... Sir, nawala po siya ng kuryente daw, sabi niya. Ah, okay. Sige, uh, Leah, can you go? Can you go now? Sige po. Pwede po ba hindi mag-on cam? Okay lang, okay lang. Thank you po. Um, ito, sir. Kita na po ba? Yeah, we can. <laughs> uh, sir, so yung akin po, uh, start ko po muna by introducing yung site ko. Although screenshot lang to. But, Yan. Um, my site area is located in Novaliches, Quezon City. So we are situated um, in a uh, area where a lot of um, tiny small houses and then factories are located. So for for the perimeter, I have 8.18 kilometers and my area is very 
big. It's 1,526 square meters. <laughs> so, ito po yung dapat present namin on Thursday. But, yes. <laughs> Nawala na kami ng time. Anyway po, um, ito po siya. So, this is the actual pictures ng um, site area. I, I decided to go there. Um, and then, I took panoramic shots. So, this is located in a um, corner lot. So, Leia, this I think, our... I think your presentation will be better if you make it full screen. Ah, okay pa. Sandali. Mas seamless. Actually, ah, pero wait, I'm sure it's an option Tops. there. It's PDF eh. Oh, oh nga pa. Wait lang po. PDF. Sorry, sir. Yeah. <laughs> It will be more appreciated if it's full screen. Okay po. <laughs> Sorry sir, kinakabahan eh. Oh, hindi. Okay lang yan. <laughs> okay lang kabahan, but later on you'll be more confident. Okay po. <laughs> um, okay sir. Ito po. Can you see it na? Mm -hmm. Okay sir. So, um, may scan pa. <laughs> so this is the corner lot yan po and then other other angles dun ng site ko so actually no before po noon wala po talagang naka built sa site ko which is this site but right now it's used as a parking area po and then under construction siya so over here these are the plants located dun sa area so i'll explain why bakit ko po siya pinicturean so before i started kasi um i decided to look further kung ano po ba yung ibig sabihin ng veget Tating. And then and then the root word was vegetate. And then I discovered that um, it's not just about growing plants. Po. And, and in fact, it's the opposite of it. But then I just um na nakita ko na these two words, deteriorate and languish, were present. So yan po, yan po yung mga meanings niya. Naka parang word map siya there. <laughs> and then so I decided to go with the three with with three plants. Na, um, the reasons why um, I decided to go with it is because first, um, they are present in the site, ko, with, meaning they could propagate on the soil there. And then next, um, it's, it's more familiar to site because um, my main goal is to not to introduce something that's really, um, yung magagamit siya, sir, and then, but at the same time, it, it blends with the community. And hindi siya, maka, hindi siya parang... Um, how do you say this? Parang hindi matatakot yung mga taong gumamit nun. Kasi typically, I think, um, dito po sa place namin, walang masyadong um, uh, kahit bahay na that's distinguished or designed. Kasi parang it's basic in a way since I think it's budget restricted. And then the site is located in front of um, factories na basic lang tignan. So I think that's one of the goals for my project. So next is the color. So I will explain it further later. And then lastly is um yung pag propag um, I mean kung paano nila ma how they grow with the in terms of sun and then the the wind factors in my side. So first one is bamboo. Um so this um particular species that I pick is actually bamboo say. So next is purple heart. So um, you will see the real photos later, but these are some of my drawings. Muna, sir. <laughs> Patisla. <laughs> so this is actually purple, and then it has pink flowers. So it's really pretty to look at. So next is santan. So the sa residential area, maraming santan po. That's why I also pick it. Um, also, it has a lot of benefits na papakita po later. So... Um, before I started, uh, I also looked and studied the height and then the lateral spread of the, its roots. So you can see it po yung parang silhouette niya. So for the bamboo, um, actually it typically grows up for the wide root spread into one to two meters. So actually it's inv an invasive plant and hindi man tayo nag-winter sa Philippines but it's semi-dormant. But it has two distinct growing seasons, early spring to summer and then um, late summer until fall. So they ship. Um, and then one of the benefits of it is that um, it's used as privacy screen and then noise barrier. Um, and then present just a site dun sa part ng factory which is right in front of my um, site. So, 
Yes. <laughs> so the colors niya, um, they are actually here. So it's light green and green. And sometimes they turn brown pag hindi mo diniligan. <laughs> anyway, next is the purple heart. So as I said, it's color purple and then it has tiny pink flowers. Um, They easily grow kahit saan. So basta as long as the, the soil is rich, moist, and then uh, it has full to part shape. So, it is also drought tolerant. So, meaning kahit makalimutan ng mga taong diligan yun, it will st- still live. Which is very good. <laughs> Next, um, it also grows up to 12 to 18 inches tall. So, it's fairly small. As you can see, um, kung titignan nyo yung bata, you know, <laughs> maliit siya. But also, um, this is also used for food color, as food colorant and um, some study shows that some research that I read that it is used to purify air. So that's also nice. But I included all of the the resources I have in my slide too. So actually, this is also an invasive plant. And it typically grows purple shrub, this tiny shrub. It has point, um, 0.5 to 1 meter wide root spread. So it's kind of similar kung gano po kalapad yung paggrow ng plant sa so, sideways i think so next is santan so actually one three, four, five. it has five colors po so you can but typically here in our area it's color red yeah so um sorry ano ginawa Alison Tracy wait ka muna sorry <laughs> Hindi, okay lang pa. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. Sorry. Okay lang. <laughs> so, for the last plant, um, it's actually 1 to 1.2 to 2 meters in height. Um, and then, its lateral root spread is parallel with the bush width. So, typically, mga nasa 1, one meter siya per, per um, uh, what do you call this? The growth of the spread of the roots. So for this suntan, um, it's actually an ornamental shrub as well as purple heart. And then it has a lot of um, beneficial herbal medicine benefits. <laughs> uh, which I'll introduce later. So this is actually a cultivated plant So it and also wild grown. So these are the steps on how to pro- prepare and propagate the, the plants. So um, for the bamboo, it's actually you um the, the technique used in this one is like you have to grow the, the sprout on a separate separate soil before planting it on the right the soil. Um the soil that you're gonna put it and then let it grow, um, which typically grows up to I think I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> um so first we have to amend the soil and then next it's the growing of the sprouts. And then after that, um, how many, I think it's about a um, few months, you transfer it to the soil, but you, ha- you also have to prepare some, con- how to contain the roots. So you have to put barriers underneath the soil and then let it propagate, uh, I, I mean, let it grow. And then uh, you can also harvest the, the shoots at exactly six inches in height. They could be edible. For the purple heart and santan, they are actually uh, they use the um, cutting technique, wherein you can cut any uh, pest-free stem or uh, any branch, um, and then you take off the leaves, put it in a glass of water, and let it sit there until the roots grow with proper sunlight, and then you transfer it to the the plot that you're you you're gonna gonna plant it. So um, purple heart is really interesting as well because it's not only used for ground cover, it could also be used as aerial, as it, it can be also an aerial plant. So meaning um, I can plant it over there and let the, the the leaves of the purple heart just hang in there. It's it's fine. And then the, for the santan plant, it's, um, it's supposed to be uh, in a ground area. So yeah. So these are the byproducts of each plant. So first for the bamboo, as I said earlier, it's edible. And one of the examples that it's used, actually it's, in, it's found in some atsara, yung hinahalo po sa 
alam niyo yung manok, tapos kakain kayo, masarap yun, tapos yun. <laughs> Pwede siya ilamin. So I think that's, that's also part of the, one of the things that decided me to, yan, kunin yung bamboo. Next, it's also an antiseptic, uh, it has antiseptic properties. Um, some researchers um, tried to, to look upon the idea of the, yung, ang tawag doon, <laughs> yung green stuff na malaki. <laughs> Basta yung trunk niya. Uh, ko, um, and then yung also the leaves, they have antiseptic properties and such that. And also, it's also used for noise barrier nga po, as I said. And then for the purple heart, um, bio wall. So it, um, it is used as a bio wall as it purifies the air. And there is a recent study about that. Um, I forgot the specific chemical that the plant have, but they... Study, the study shows that um, it, it is used usually as an indoor plant which um, purifies significantly the air but it could be also used as an outdoor plant and but usually nakikita siya sa landscaping because of its color. And then next, it is also used as a food dye. For the Santan plant, this, is, this has a lot of beneficial things. So for the roots, um, you can see na pwede mo siyang kunin lang out of the the plant and then cut it and then boil it boil it or either make it as a tea and then it is used to to cure hiccups loss of appetite diarrhea and sore throat and then for the for its flowers um alam i think some of us na try na yung parang kinuha yung tubig sa loob and then matamis daw actually that's not just it um it is also used to make tea and then it cures hypertension and for the last part, it's leaves. When you crush it and then you make try to make a patch out of it, it is used to um, cure boils, eczema, and then cuts. So there, there is for my research part. So next one, um, these are the actual pictures put on the site, and which is why one of the reasons why I picked it. Because um, I think if I want to introduce something to the site, I want it to be local and then. Um, something na sure ako mag-grow siya instead of invi- um, introducing another plant species. Baka mamatay kasi. So for my site section, um, uh, I, I noticed that it has, my, my site actually has a slope. Pero pag nandun ka po, it's not noticeable. So as you can see, um, this is my site. Although nakat siya sa area na may construction parts dito. Because this is also a construction parking lot. And then this is the site area. These are the locations ng mga plants na nandito. Although this is a mango tree, but I didn't include it because it's quite far from my site. So this is the other site section. So for my observation, I tried observing the activities ng mga tao sa area namin. Since it's for them, I will be this. I want to to introduce uh, an architecture or space that's that would be usable for them na hindi sila matatakot gamitin at any time. So for the morning, um, maraming nag-exercise, both young and old people, and naglalaro sila sa area na to. And then next, for the noon, since um, the area is in front of, uh, surrounded rather by factories, um, pag lunch break, nandito sila sa may area na to before, na magkaroon ng mga parking area. Diyan sila kumakain kahit tirek yung araw. <laughs> Which is very sad kasi wala silang um, kahit mini bahay kubo or something to put shade on them. Next in the afternoon, uh, dito na po natatapos yung shift nila. So nakikita nyo po na parang ma-observe dun sa area na yun. Marami nang nagpa-park ng uh, mga construction materials and stuff like that and also pala i forgot to mention meron pong tusok tusok uh, kung alam niyo po yun, yung fish ball and, and then mommy stand over there although hindi siya nasa prime location but nandun siya sa accessible para sa mga workers and then after dark this is very interesting um kasi um naglalakad po ako pag uwi tapos naabutan po ako ang gabi may nakikita pa ako mga nagsiskateboard and then nag-racing pa. Kasi nga po yung road, I think that's um the one, parang strength siya ng side ko na it's flat and it's 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 very wide. Tapos walang, nag, walang nagpa-parking. So 
naglalaro yung mga tao sa gabi, kahit sa gabi. So, these are the sight model. Yan po. I tried my best. Different angles po. Yes. So, for my idea pool, um, I just doodled stuff. So, although sinab- minamention ko na, na I wanted something na for my site to utilize the sun and then introduce an organic form and stuff like that. Uh, for my sun carving and iterations part. So, before I came up with the f- something I will show to you right now, I nakaabot po ata ako ng mga 50 iterations. Pero yung papakita ko yung pinaka sa tingin ko nagustuhan ko. <laughs> so, I started this one. Mga 10 steps siya. So, these iterations are for produced and simulated using the digital tools on first and then the model na po. So, uh, the location of my son is actually in this lap, this coordinates. And then I chose the time between um, the hottest times of the year from dito sa amin, March to May. And then the, the, everything, it's fairly okay. So, ayan po yung itsura niya. Um, ito. My, with the sun. So for this is the, this is our the 3D thing. Which is man. So first um I took the shape of the lot and then next I tried to slice it um symmetrically. Um and then I decided to put the curves um inspired by the movements of the the plants there and then the how i think how would the would affect my my form and then i decided to play with the to eliminate some parts and elevate or play with the height of the site and then i went back again <laughs> pinuntay ko and then tinanggal ko na tinanggalan ko naman ng i think walls but then, and then i introduced the something na parang actually curve siya but it's not there And then, ayan po, parang I decided kung ano po yung optimal na lagyan ng actual butas instead of creating it everything. Because um, I'm concerned of the privacy. Kasi nga po, um, presidential yung mga nandito, baka mahiya sila <laughs> or something. And then went back to the elevations. And then, this is my form that's affecting the, with the sun and wind. So the red one is from the south oh sa ami uh, uh, habagat and then the blue one is the cool wind which is amihan tama po ba <laughs> and then i chose three times so 6 12 and 16 to 17 o'clock so the hottest time is 12 so si trick na trick po yung araw opo and then the 6 actually Yes, it po. Um, also, the reason why I played with the elevations is because I wa- um, dito po sa side na to, this is the side where the shanty or tiny houses are located. And then this side is in front of the factory. So parang I wanted to level it sa, sa environment ko. So still blending with it. But at the same time, I think it's, it's, um, it would be unique dun po sa area na yun. So, ayan po yung una. <laughs> Ito po yung model ng itsura sa loob. I tried my best. Opo. <laughs> ayan po. <laughs> ayan pa, other side. Eh, so, ayan din po yung research ko. Yay! Hey! <laughs> Tapos na po. Okay. I have a few comments. Opo. Uh, presentation. I think yung approach ni Leia, eh, she's actually very, very site sensitive Yeah, I like I like the like I love the intuition like how to yeah. respond to site. Thank you po, thank you. Yeah, like um you're always thinking about the site which is very good. It's like echo yung one of those really natural on be emphasizing with the site. So <laughs> that's very thank nice and I hope you keep that up yung part na yon. Like um, when you going to touch is going to cry because it's so emotional. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I ganon yung yung nakita mo na matay yung purple plant, may iyak ka, ganon. <laughs> I okay. think yung plants na pinili mo, they're good plants, although I think baka three is three is ah, po. for you. Ah, kasi, baka ma-overwhelm ka, yun yung concern ko. Okay lang po. <laughs> about um, that kasi, I'm sorry po. Uh, parang, 
meron na po rin ako ahead na idea about it kasi I wanted na yung plants ko would grow sa architecture ko. That's why may, kung napansin niyo po parang may maliliit na parts, parang mahabang parts. Doon ko po balak ilagay yung bamboo. Pero, and then parang in overtime, may kita mo nagbabago din yung site, yung architecture ko or gano'n. At least yun po yung idea ko for now. Yun po. Mm-hmm. Sige po. So, hindi ko lang alam kung paano mo i-incorporate yung processes for the three different plants. So, that would be really okay challenging. And okay then, po. kasi dalawa pa lang na ideas i-merge mo, mahirap na yun, actually. So, okay. and even developing one idea is already also de- difficult. So, yung concern ko lang is yung three might be so much lang. Apa, apa. Lang yung magiging danger doon. I'm not saying that it's bad that you're doing three. It's just mm. that it's really a lot because you can develop <laughs> with one idea. Like what we did nung Artless 2, apa. kami nung partner ko, um, we were researching about the coffee plant and making the architecture for the coffee plant and then biglang we're also doing something for the civet cats and then nag-evolve yung architecture. Uh, but okay. with you, um, you have to be able to show the, show how your bamboo in the architecture, di ba, na-influence yung architecture and then na-influence okay. nung isang plant and then na-influence pa nung isang plant. So it should be really okay. evident that, you know, yung tree na yun nag-hybrid for the building. Not just that they're growing there, okay? Okay. Very okay. important. It's really something na Pag tinanggal ko yung bamboo, hindi na yan the same building at all. Not because of the looks, but it's just not gonna work when you remove it. Yun yung very important doon. Okay po. And then, I like nga yun yung intuition mo on the site. You were looking at the activities. That's very good. You already have ideas to incorporate within the architecture. I'm suggesting that maybe you would pick a plant that would best complement the things mm-hmm. that you have researched already. Okay so, po. Diba, yung may, may plants ka na natatlo na papagpilian, um, what would best complement the activity that would be happening okay. there, diba? okay, So that but... you can improve the place. So okay. maybe that's an approach that you can do. And okay. then for your um presentation um outputs, um I know na yung, ano, you feel na madumi yung model mo. You can do better next time. <laughs> so okay. ano lang yan, um, materials kasi. Yung models, yan. Kayang-kaya okay. mo yan. And then, um, and then yung... I, I'm actually torn with your other presentation going if I like it na may, medyo sketchy kasi may part ah, yes. sketchy so hindi ko pa alam kung if I like <laughs> it or if I want it cleaner although I know okay, na I'm well. towards the cleaner part but it's nice to have these sketches yung ganyan na medyo sketchy sketch like drawings as part of the process okay. but when you're Thank already you. showing the ano na yung pinaka final thing I would I would like to see it much cleaner. Yung okay, po. And okay, then, po. um, ano pa ba yung isa? Yung side section mo, I actually like the side section, but then I'm also torn about the sketchy look of it if I like. <laughs> okay, I po. like, I like na ano nung una hindi ko naintindihan yung side section, but then, <laughs> but then yung meron kang label dun sa baba, you know, that was also nicely done na parang, okay, this is the site, meron construction dito, meron gana. I was able to understand because of your labeling and then, Ayan, um, I think it's a good presentation and um, yun yung advice ko lang sa'yo, you have to just maybe perhaps focus na and then later on ka okay na pa. Um, pali- yun. Okay so pa. You, you can use the site ano na, that you've seen, kung ano activities and then I hope you synergize your program with what's already on the site and you okay get to pa. pick a plant because of Apa. what's happening in the site. And Apa. besides, napili mo naman yung tatlong plants because of the site, edi i-trim down mo siya based dun sa nangyayal sa site, di ba? Okay pa, okay pa. So, Thank yun you yung, ano, yung advice. So, Thank, thank you, you. This, this goes for everyone. I hope everyone is listening. And when I reiterated about making your presentation more visual, uh, because there's still a tendency to put it in text, like this is the span of the growth of the bushes and the root, etc. It will be nice. Um, this is how we bridge information and being an architect. Uh, using the technical know-how that we have, you guys are already done with your drafting, visual, visual communication, etc. So uh, if you are talking about, let's say, the span, then put it on a plan. Like, how, what's the plan of uh, of a uh, pandan or a purple something? Uh, pandan ba? O oh, tama ba? Pandan? Hindi pandan yung santan. Santan. Okay, like santan. So then you have a dimension just to educate everyone that you're talking about the space already. 
to get it like the average dimension. So th that way you're already bridging the physicality of space and information and research. You know what I mean? So that's why I gave you an example before. This goes for everyone, not just Leia. Before that, uh, when you are talking about the anatomy of the plant, and probably treat it as an architectural, architectural building, they may dimension, etc. So, um, I want you guys to do the same thing when you are presenting your specific information. So, if you're talking about average sizes, then probably aside from the elevation, you have a plan. So that way, you're already setting yourself. Uh, you're already having a visual mindset that it will translate into something uh, um, very physical later on. Because the presentation mostly that I've seen, even with lands, a lot of them are still in text. And um, there's another step for you to be able to put it into something very physical. Um, whereas if you, you see it as a physical thing already, the moment you see an information, when you, the moment you see numbers, Try to intuitively imagine it as, as a space or as a drawing or as a shape. Do you know what I mean? So that way, it can already help you with the physicality of the, the project. You can already imagine the physical properties of it. All right. So going back to Leia's presentation, uh, yes, I like the, the site sensitivity. I, I think you, you, need to, uh, you need to... Uh, uh, maintain that and then um, I agree with uh, Kyle although I was excited with all those information and uh, the fact that uh, they are the f it's not that it's not that I'm saying that it's be it's a better proposal but I really like the idea that it's that your idea is uh, getting the plant from the site itself uh, so okay. that uh, it will be uh, more natural for them to grow and at the same time, as you said, it won't intimidate your target stakeholders. Uh, so that's good. But uh, I'm also liking the fact that you are aware that we are still in a very early stage of the design, uh, that it will still change. But you already talking about skateboarding, the work, <laughs> which I really, really like because it means that you are really observing the site uh, and demonstrating how you empathize with the surroundings so uh and i love that about it and probably it can well. inform the eventual proposal but uh, again reiterate what kyle was as mentioned because later on you will need to develop a program that will be uh -huh. appropriate that, that will maximize the potential of the vegetating proposal and the site itself and and uh -huh. also useful for the stakeholders so uh, I was looking at your proposal earlier. There, there were three plants, and then, and then you presented like three, uh, like uh, the different uses. Maybe try to okay. find a commonality. And so far, the, the first okay, that came to mind was the food, etc. Although, you know, you can still change this. Uh, this is not set in stone, but it just me my impression based on your presentation. Because the purple has a food dye, and then the other okay. one has, uh, I don't know. It's something to do something to do with ingredient, etc. And then I know that the 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 bamboo is used for certain food, etc. And then um, the bamboo alone can be an architecture. It's a, oh. a, a structural uh, structural material. So uh, the way I imagine it, it will be very at this stage. Although I'm not, I don't want to influence your direction, but oh. yeah, it will be. It will be uh, very natural. So uh, okay. utilizing bamboo as a, not just a material, but as a conduit of something. That, that's how I interpreted your presentation. Oh. Um, you for yeah, because later on, think of uh, um, what you can do with these uh, products. Uh, food dye, what is the process in doing that? And then uh, the other stuff that you were talking about. So, uh, okay. yeah, it's, I think you were able to target a lot of potential topics, potential, um, yeah, potential uh, project direction. Thank you, Paul. All right. Thank you, Leah. 
Thank you po, sir. Thank you po, sir. Po. Parang gusto ko itong utusan si Lea. Lea, pa sa ito. Visit nga. Hindi makita mo dito sa video. Hindi po ako gala. Hindi po ako gala. Pero... Ganun na. <laughs> Thank you po. Parang natuwa yung, ano, yung pagiging empathic with the Thank you po. Thank you. Cheska, are you ready? Baka nagulat si Cheska. <laughs> okay lang po, sir. All right, sige. It's, uh, you can already share what you have. Sige, I'll just get my coffee while you are preparing. Just continue the presentation. You don't, wait, you don't have to wait for me. Kita, kita na ba? Kita na, kita na. Okay. Sige, thank you. Um, so, for my research, po, I searched, um, I used banana leaves because it's a yung, uh, pretty common sa area and, um, and pretty um, common then to eat and use. So, beneficial din siya sa um, mga tao around the area kasi yung area ko puro uh, residential. Um, so, um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> um, ito rin, uh, ano siya, um, <laughs> um, madali siyang i-plant itanim kasi ako uh, kuha ka lang ng peas and um, it would only take one to two years tapos pwede nang mag-harvest and so um, inisip ko yung use niya sa people around the area um, kaya ito yung pinili ko I think it's very um, useful and beneficial for them um, tapos ito po yung site section ko it's purely residential um, just one story or two story um, houses. Um, and ano lang po siya, typical puro puno lang. Uh, consists of banana tree and mango tree. Um, and this is my uh, sun carving. So, medyo malaki po yung lot ko. Around 50 by 40 meters. And um, so I started off with just a simple rectangle and then I placed it. So I, I, I studied the sun rotation and dito po sa area in uh, northeast, dito po yung um, sunrise and it, dito po naka-face yung usual entrance ng mga uh, houses. Kasi yung kabilang site po, uh, LRT, uh, TAF. Ab, so hindi po siya, ano po siya, full of cars and everything, and um, uh, chaotic and busy. So dito po sa, dito po sa northeast, yun po yung mga entrances ng mga bahay. And um, binis ko po yung sun carving ko like that, as you can see here, po sa 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, kasi sa sunrise, uh, imagine ko po na kapag dumama yung araw dun sa uh, building, it would create a shadow if you um, cut off that middle block, but in a way, hindi push up um, present hanggang loob, just, just a piece, because it would create that um, dramatic shadow effect in the, in the part na yun. And then the afternoon, and the a.m. to 2 p.m., the sun is directly um, on top of the of the building and for that I so instead of carving it the way the sun uh, hits the the surface I in, in contrast I did curves to create um shadows to hit the roof kind of like a wave um and then for the um southwest areas around the sunset 2 p.m and then 6 p.m specifically, I, I did vertical um, pull-outs 
as you can see here. So it's um it started off with three pieces and then the other two I I did another piece in the middle. So this creates um the effect even if it creates uh, several shadows um during sunset. So um it's a modern in black and white. Um this is the with with sun. Okay, thank you, Cheska. Wait, lang, ah. um, oh, yeah, uh, did you mention that your site dimension is 60 by 45? Uh, no, 50 by 40. Yung po yung original lot, but 50 I'm by 40. Yeah, I'm planning that piece because it's quite big. Okay, that yeah, uh, you might we um given the our time limit, um with the term, you might die doing this project because it's a big, <laughs> almost, uh four times the size of everyone's average. I know. And what you can do is uh probably pick a side within the property that you want to work yeah. on, just to you know decrease along the, the project okay. scope because you know we might do a building like uh, the highest will be four story building uh, for this project and um, mm -hmm. try to imagine 2000 times four. So you'll be working yeah. 8,000 square meter project. So uh, it's not <laughs> ideal, but um, you don't, um, the idea behind the sand carving is for you to develop a sensitivity with uh, the, the natural conditions of the site uh, by recognizing the direction of air and then at the same time the the sun orientation uh, where you can you know optimize sun exposure minimize it also etc so uh you may probably augment that part later on um and then uh but uh, try to reduce it so that uh, uh you can have a more manageable size project reduce it to 500 um okay, within five or four hundred to six hundred six hundred is okay uh seven hundred you know major okay but uh yeah. but what's another type of five hundred all right okay. Uh, okay cooks do you have any comments um i think a little bit more research on the banana plant so that you would know what else you could do with it diba? May mga ibang okay. mga ano dito na banana din yung pinili nila. So it's going to be interesting when you guys present again and again na dapat mag-iiba talaga yung direction and makikita natin yung difference ng approaches ng architecture. Okay. So yun yung magiging challenge by choosing a banana. If you're going to push to the banana, yung mga iba banana din yung pinili. So I'm not saying that you should change it. I'm just saying that it's an extra challenge if you think of a way, not that you know you're competing with each other. Cause so it's it's that challenge that you can't um remove, diba? Na if someone is doing a banana and then like plantation, the setting idea, niya, you know, and then maybe that idea you would have come up with that anyway later on. Diba? Um okay. taken the idea. Na yan. So yin lang yung ano ko na more research so that you find out what else you can do for with the plant and um you could have a different approach versus doon sa others because of course we saw natin yung different solutions with the same source yes okay. thank you actually thank i don't want to say i don't want to say competition because they might get yeah. it but it's more yeah, of a, a naman. comparison more of a comparison between projects that you probably just approach it different way then the other, yeah. other guy. Who's the other banana guy? The low one, yeah. eh, di ba? The low pa yung banana, may ba? Ame, so tatlo sila. Tatlo yata. Ay, no, sir, si Joe po yung isa, yung banana guy. Okay. Sino pa isa? Ako, sir. Or wala. Ayan. Si Mark. Okay. Si si Mark and ano. But uh, for the three of you, think of uh, a program that you can introduce 
uh, with the banana? Are you dealing with the plant? Are you dealing with the leaves? Are you dealing with uh, other stuff? But I think my former, uh, my previous uh, comments on the previous students apply. Uh, when I'm talking about, you know, um, try to imagine it visually and uh, also identifying the, the, the number of yields per area, et cetera, so that uh, we can really claim that we are using this as something. Do you get it? Because the moment you use it once, what happens? So the process ends. So uh, it's good that uh, it will be good if it's a continuous, sustainable uh, process in the building, meaning that the, the building is alive because it's doing something. Uh, it's uh, propagating the banana because it's giving this product and then and then it's a cycle of production. All right? Naging banana queue building. <laughs> yeah. Shay, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so yeah. Anytime now. So Julian, are you ready after Shay? Yes, sir. Okay. Si Anna. Wala na ako kuryente kanina. Ay, di, si Anna muna pala. Si Anna. O si Julian na. muna pagkatapos. Kasi baka mawala na muna kuryente si Julian. So si Shay muna, then Julian, and then Anna. And then Kristen. O sige, after na si ano. Before Julian, uh, before Kier, si Houston. Okay. Okay na po ba, sir? All right. Game. Pwede na. Okay. So, um, yung some, ano ko po, sa site ko, ano, since dito po kasi sa Laguna po kasi, so, pro, province siya. So, madami talagang vegetation sa site map ko. So, uh, subdivision yan, and, uh, yung lot niya, hindi po, I'm not sure kung saan saan magtatapos yung parang territory ng lot na yan. I, inassume ko na lang. It's yeah, okay very lang big. Na. Sige. Kasi, nor, but in an actual project, you need to identify. Huh? Just to clarify. Yes. Uh, but yes. Uh, since this is a hypothetical project, just identify where it is. But normally, when you identify it, you include um, what do you call that? You have the sidewalk and then after the sidewalk, then that's the line. Of the property. Okay. okay. Yes. Because okay. Medyo, ano pe, na, your your property lines offset. Okay. Uh, from the from the road. It's too far maybe from by the road. Yeah. Or maybe include the road. I don't know. By the no, include the sidewalk. If the sidewalk is not visible. Okay. So yung po yung. Okay, that's fine. Around one thousand square meters. Then. So. You know na. Limited. Then, ko po. Sige. then um, ito pa yung sa site section. So, mm -hmm. um, Interesting. yung sa, ito po yung sa mismong lot ko. So, medyo, so mataas siya. Tapos, pagdating po sa side, wag pababa. So, uh, ang, ano, ang problema ko lang po sa lot ko is mabaha po yung ibang part. Lalo na pag, ano po, pag binabagyo or kahit konting ulan lang minsan mab mabaha na po siya. So, um, ganyan po. Then, um, tinignan ko po yung mga, kung ano po yung mga visible na plants or trees. So, tatlo po yung nakita ko. Then, ang una po dyan yung wild sugar cane. Yung sa Tagalog po yung talahib. Okay. Ganyan po. But it's so, not sugar cane. Po. Hindi siya sugar cane. Hindi po. Okay. Um, so, yung height po ng wild sugar cane is pag full grown siya, around 1 to 3.5 meters yung height niya. So, mataas. Then, uh, then yung sa, ma, yung spikelets po niya kasi ma, maano po siya, parang makati po pag <laughs> pag na ano mo na daanan mo ganun minsan po nakakasugat po yung ganun yung ano niya spikes then uh, for you says how come in the movie say would see boyfriends and girlfriends running in the wild in the grass 
So, <laughs> it's not a lahi. It's not true pala. Makati <laughs> pala doon. <laughs> Tapos, uh, doon po sa uses niya, um, doon po sa Indian subcontinent, ginagamit po siya as medicine. Then, uh, for yung, yung roots po ng su- wild sugar cane is ano din, for soothing irritated skin and heal wounds. Then, uh, may na-search din po ako sa, ano, sa Google na dito po sa Pinas, ginagamit din po siya as pang, panggawa ng walis. Yung, yung ano po, yung parang, yung makating part sa, sa halaman, ginagawa po siyang walis din. Then, uh, next po, ito po yung carabao grass or the ba- or buffalo grass. Uh, yeah. grass. <laughs> Ginamit ko sa view. Sa, sa ter- yeah. <laughs> so, ayun po, for sa, di- sa dimensions po, yung height ng stem is 20 to 70 centimeters high. Then, uh, Okay na yan. So, uh, I, don't, okay. I don't think we need to know the per leaf dimension. Okay. Yeah. Opa. Then, uh, first, sa uses po ng carabao grass, um, same lang din, used as herbal medicine in Africa. Then, uh, sa roots, for ano po siya, sa diarrhea. Then, uh, ganun din po, for wound healing din yung leaves niya. The, uh, also, pwede rin po siyang gamitin as la- sa landscaping. Hmm. Puro kasi siya and uh, very resilient. Apo. Yung ano pala, ako baka, baka makalimutan ko, make sure that your dimension line is very thin. Kasi it, it oh. <laughs> sort of ano eh, uh, takes away you from the actual drawing. So it shouldn't be Apo. that dominant. Just a side comment. Para you can improve it. Say, go ahead. Okay po. Then next po is yung mango, mango tree. So yung po, masyadong malaki yung mango tree, umabot ng 100 feet yung height. So for ano po sa characteristics, um, they grow in ano, tropical climates. Then, so for uses po, they can be eaten raw. Tapos, um but may benefits din po siya for ano po yan uh, for sa diabetes din po pwede rin po siya din so for sa harvesting um hindi po kasi agad nagmamature ay hindi po siya lahat at the same time na nagmamature yung mango so pag pinik mo siya dapat you have to wait for a few days para po siya mag mag So, yun. So, for my sun, sun carving, um, inaral po po yung kung paano po yung rotation ng sun sa, sa, sa month of April since yun po yung hottest month sa atin. So, from around 8 a.m. Ayan, nag, uh, dun po sa, sa likod po. So, Ito po yung north. So usually kasi pag sa pag summer, sa north, uh, hindi hindi tumatama yung sun. Dito. So it allows parang cool cool air to, pa, to pass through sa loob ng, ng structure. Para hindi po masyado mainit. Same lang din po sa, sa may south side. <clears throat> So, parang nagkakaroon siya ng shade. Then, for 12 p.m., ganyan di, ganun din po. Di, wala, di po pumapasok masyado yung sunlight. Para, yun po, di po mainit. Same din po sa 4 p.m. Then, for December, since yung sun, um, pag sa south po banda, yung, yung rotation ng sun, so, naglagay po ako ng butas para lang po makita na the may at least may sunlight po na papasok for for heat naman po then ayun 
Ano po yung sa picture? Ngayon lang po yung... Right. Focus ikaw muna. Inubus pa coffee ko eh. Okay. Um, yung like the other comment, I suggest you pick a specific plant. Ngayon, yung because of your site conditions, na malaki yung possible area and kasi hindi pa naka-offset to take up the entire lot, your lot will be probably around 2,000 or 3,000 square meters, even more. Um, I wouldn't, actually, with the nature of the site, um, ang mangyayari, even though you have a very big lot, you have a small building footprint probably na would accommodate that 400 to 500 square meters, which isn't actually bad. Kasi you would have, um, parang your project, I see it na parang meron kang unique open space around ko around the entire building. So you could actually utilize that. Kasi syempre, di ba, ang awkward naman nun kung yung lot na kinuha mo, ganun nga kalakit, tas isang corner lang ilalagay mo, tas nalagay mo yung building dun sa corner na yun. Parang weird naman. So, di ba, pwede, pwede Sir Jim niya kunan yung big lot and yeah. just have a smaller footprint there. I, I think yes, so, pwede naman. And, but yeah. the building footprint can be small. Just the building yeah. footprint. Yeah. Kasi yun yung nature of your lot, eh. you can't do anything about that, di ba? Di ba naman gusto isubdivide yung lot into a smaller one versus yung pinasent kanina na malaki nga yung building niya 2,000 square meters but it's an urbanized area. Parang it doesn't really make sense to just become a small footprint versus the entire lot, di ba? May mga ganun din cases. So, since sa'yo naman it's in the province, di ba? It, it could work well that way. And then, um, for the sun carving, um, I think it's just very simple. You know, you could have done a little, a little bit more with it. But at okay. least, nag-react ka with that one. Like, okay, ito, dito yung sun. Ayoko yung sun dito. So, kailangan ko siya i-block. Ganun. But okay. I think you just have to be a little bit more convinced on what you did. Parang when you're sharing it, hindi ka pa convinced masyado din sa ginawa mo. So, dapat naniniwala ka din sa ginawa mo para ano. Ay, kinabahan mo. Para, oh, ganun. So, Mawala din yung kaba na yan, yun yung ano, yung kaya pinapapresent kayo lagi, di ba? Hanggang mawala yung kaba na yan. Ayan. So, yun yung comments ko. I think maybe a little bit better for the graphics, yung what you can do. Hindi lang siya screenshot, hindi lang ganun. Um, you can post-process it a certain way. Yun. Okay. Okay, Jessica, um, maybe this applies for everyone. Try to develop the research a little further by trying to translate it to something very physical and visual. And uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, and uh, try to expand the information that you need uh, so that it will be useful for you later on. You know that we are propagating a plant species or a, a fruit, etc. Then know the, the maximum yield and the minimum yield at a certain time of uh, the year. And how much you can produce. Um, Shay, how many mango trees are available in your property? Um, not sure po, pero di naman po siguro lalagpas sa five. Ah, okay. So then I think you need to find out the how much mangoes can you harvest. Um, normally, it's an orchard so that uh, you can have a really good amount of mangoes to produce. But other than that, um, I agree with Cooks. When it comes to the size of the property, it's okay to be big and then try to reduce the lang the 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 building footprint to make it okay. smaller. Or probably you can make it a more spread out uh, kind of thing, but still utilizing probably a maximum of 500 square meter project area. I mean, yeah. baka nga maliliit na buildings eh. I don't know. I mean, you know, totally it's sa, up to you. Mm -hmm. The total is uh, 2,000 square meters. Uh, floor area. But uh, going back, yeah, for everyone, try to develop the project already with the product in mind, not just about the propagation. Uh, think of uh, what you can do with it so that we can already move on to the program aspect of the project. Uh, for instance, uh, when you talk about the mango, what you can do with the mango. Um, this is grand. This is a. Uh, this is a. Uh, 
in the case wherein we already know the yield of the, the fruit, uh, the yield of the tree, and how much it can produce. So if you know, know that already, um, what you can do with the mango fruit, and I know that you can do a lot of products with it, sweet products that probably that can be the program. I don't know yet. But uh, yeah, you need to introduce us to that to that stage already. So uh, and that will help us inform the program to develop. All right, Jay. Para ano? Para sa hindi pa nakakaintindihan, nakakaintindihan. Anong ibig sabihin ba ng parang ide-design namin yung program based on the fruit? So um, what you can do actually, I would suggest you go. And watch Monsters Inc. <laughs> I-analogize natin siya sa Monsters Inc. Because it's a very, very good analogy of what you're actually doing here. So Monsters, Monsters Inc. Si Mike Wazowski. Si Mike Wazowski. Uh, yeah, yeah. Si Sully. Si Sully Van, di ba? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. for example, meron silang idea, which is they use cream for electricity. Yun yung idea nung buong movie, doon naka-hinge, di ba? Well, of course, hindi naman yung ganun dito in the real world because it that what one's entirely fictional, mga monsters nga. But you see the architecture sila on how they store the doors, di ba? That entire facility. That is not architecture you can find anywhere. It's a building for doors, essentially, di ba? You're like making a building for mangoes. What What's that like, di ba? Um, meron siyang... Um, Diba, minsan makikita mo may pintuan pa sa maliit na monster, may pintuan pa sa malaking monster, makikita mo yung kotse ng isang monster, ganito yung design, yung kotse ng isang monster, mas malaki, kasi malaki siya. Yung mga ganong things na, you know, although that one is, um of course, na-develop nila to a certain extent to create the world for the different kinds of monsters, di ba? Kaya I really like that as a comparison kasi much like that one, yung ginagawa nyo, imbis na monsters yung dinag-design nyo, ito, you're designing for the plants that you chose and diba yun yung that's how you make also that's how you would develop eventually to create unique and um creative architecture so ayun lang yung keep in mind kung gusto niyo ma-inspire tingnan niyo yung monsters in tingnan niyo kung ano yung unusual things na ginawa nila doon na wala naman sa real world and how they designed the world the monsters in so it's really well made done and ayun <laughs> uh, this is a very good analogy and example. All right, so let's go to uh, Julian. Hi, sir. Hello. Uh, share screen. Okay. Kita po ba, sir? Yes. Okay. So, uh, start lang ako sa uh, isang slide lang nung uh, site inventory ko, which is yung mismong visibility map ng area. So, my site is actually a part of a para siyang commercial zone ng subdivision ko. So, it's like the uh, yung uh, nandun yung mga office buildings ng subdivision and meron ding malls na nakasurround. So, uh, it's a big open space. Open siya in a way na hindi masyadong mat mataas yung buildings uh, pero malalaki yung surrounding buildings when it comes to their footprint so yung surface area so uh, yun. ito yung uh, lot na pinili ko pero masyado siya malaki so i just used half of it so and ito yung uh, basically pinaka malapit na building ito yung katabing building nung uh, site ko so it's a commercial building and uh, kalahati ng building is actually a grocery. So, uh, ayun, uh, yung lot ko is para siyang, ano, uh, dun sa isang side ng lot ko is meron siyang park, uh, itong side na to. Then, yung lot ko is an open space na para siyang nagiging extension ng park na yun. Pero hindi siya masyadong ginagamit. And I think may plan sila na itayo rin dyan na building at some point. So, right now, uh, para lang siyang nagiging picnic area ng mga families. Uh, parang, pero, ayun, halos wala siyang, uh, halos hindi siya ginagamit. Then, uh, yung katabi niya na building, which is yung commercial building, uh, meron siyang parang, parang siyang hollow area sa gitna, na yun yung uh, nagiging, nagiging entrance papunta dun sa site ko. And, Itong section na to actually, uh, hindi yan yung 
pinaka-itsura niya when you look at it sa actual site. Kasi ano, uh, halos natatakpan din yung building ng mga puno. Hindi ko lang nilagay dito. Kasi hindi na siya makikita. Pero ayun. Uh, so, okay. So, ito yung site. Uh, so, may kita dyan na uh, uh, kahit malalaki yung surface area ng nung buildings na katabi, uh, very open pa rin yung site. Okay, so this part, uh, dito ko nag-start sa pag-carve ng form ng building ko, which uh, I started by uh, adding in an offset from the surrounding buildings para may space siya. And at the same time, iniwasan ko rin yung existing trees na nandun na since ayoko na siyang, ayoko ng maging in the way dun sa mga puno na yun. So, ayun, uh, the lot size or the building size is actually 35 meters by 20 meters. Then, I started with the wind carving. Uh, binutasan ko yung building in a way na oriented siya sa northeast and southwest since uh, dun yung direction ng wind. Then, with that, I started to car uh, to do the solar carving. So since uh, yung front ng building ko is para siyang park, an uh, open area, nandun yung mga, nandun naglalaro yung mga families, uh, I decided to create space for shade since yun yung entrance ng building. Then on the other side, uh, I allowed indirect light to come. So parang inislice ko yung building na sakto dun sa, uh, sa angle ng sunlight. Next, uh, for the back side naman, uh, I decided to add a balcony na parang magiging exposed siya to sunlight throughout the day. So uh, I angled the wall uh, na parang sakto siya sa, sa time ng sunset which is dun sa direction na yun. Then uh, at the same time, my exposed din siya sa sunlight for the whole day. So next, I opened up a uh, part of the building na my exposed siya to the sunset time para since medyo hindi na harsh yung sunlight sa time na yun, I decided na parang i-allow ko yung light na pumasok. Then same goes for the other side, dun naman sa sunrise na side. So ayun, in-open up ko yung taas ng building since yun yung part na hindi na siya nakaharangan nung katabi niya na building. Okay, so, this is the summary ng so wind and solar carving ko. Then, ito yung kinalabasan ng model. Okay, so, for my plant, uh, I decided to go with the coffee plant or yung coffee arabica. Uh, medyo wala siyang relation sa site ko pero I decided to go with this kasi ito yung uh, focus ko nung artistry. So I just didn't wanted to continue with it. So, okay. so uh, the coffee plant in its mature size, mature growth uh, is actually 1.5 meters tall. Pero since it's, it's actually more of a bush, so it will continue growing. Uh, some will grow to more than 5 meters. Pero uh, this, uh, according to what I've read, when it grows to more than two meters tall. Uh, the production of cherries actually becomes less since there's more branches, which is why it's needed to be trimmed regularly. So it's the it it produces the optimal amount of uh, cherries. Right. So for the dimensions, uh, like I said, the height uh, the optimal height is. 1.5 meters, and it's also the optimal spacing in between the trees pag pinlansya. So, uh, yung depth ng roots, it reaches more than 1.5 meters, pero most of the roots is actually just uh, on the surface. So, about uh, 30 centimeters below ground, according to what I've read. And for its life cycle, actually, from, from the sapling, it takes about three to five years to grow into the mature tree when it starts flowering. And when it starts flowering, it's actually a sign that it will start producing fruits, which will happen about seven to nine months after the flowering. And, and 
when it comes to harvesting, uh, you can actually harvest harvest it about two to three times in a year, and uh, according to what I've read. Pero major inconsistent yung mga nakita ko sa iba ibang sources. One year actually produces about four four kilo kilograms of coffee beans. So, ayan. the yung cherry pala na produce niya is uh, there's two coffee beans inside of one cherry. Then yung coffee beans, uh, yun na rin yung ginagamit to plant it. So, yun lang po. <laughs> yun na po yung lahat. Okay. Okay, I got a little excited because uh, the way you presented the dimensions of the plant is sort of what I'm looking for and probably mm -hmm. more. But I got a little uh, short pink when I didn't see any party yet. Um, but I understand I haven't required it yet. But uh, I was expecting, I was just probably, um, yeah, expecting a little. And uh, yeah, I'm curious how you're going to develop this into an architectural project later on. Um, and then know, know that uh, the program that uh, will this uh, information inspire. Kyle, baka may madadagdag na. Hindi ka pwede gumamit ng civet si cats, okay. <laughs> um, Napangunahan ko na. Civet si yeah, cats. Sabi na, uh, he missed that part when you shared. Yeah. Si yeah. Kasi ano lang kami nung sa Artlist 2 coffee plant, but we built it with um civet si cats. So, mas hardcore environmentalist na doon ngayon. Si, uh, during that time, si James, so. <laughs> I wanted an animal lover, so I allowed it now. No to animal abuse. <laughs> Oo, palang gumawa kami ng zoo, di ba? <laughs> so, hindi siya nice in the end. <laughs> siya sa project. I think it's a nice thought that um, there's a grocery nearby. Actually, nung sinabi mo may grocery nearby, I thought you were going to choose a plant that would complement the grocery in a way. Na palang naisip ko like... Um, wala na, na-imagine ko yung mga tao sa grocery lalabas, tas magpipick ng, ng some produce, tas babalik sa grocery. Parang naisip ko yung ganong program. Ano, sa... ano, Sir Jim? Ang idea kaya yun. Then may coffee. <laughs> Actually, hindi ko naisip yun. <laughs> Kaso kayo nasa coffee ka na, so mapupunta ka sa medyo coffee shop pairing-ish, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, ano yung ma-offer mo na process doon? Well, to be honest, experience. at this stage, it's not the one that uh, that uh, Julian was able to produce is not a lot. Maybe there's still yeah. room for yeah, you know, for improvement. Probably change it so that it's more context driven. Mm -mm. I, think, I think I I'm, think he has to maximize for the lot. Hindi niliitan niya. I, I think. He has to take it all over and also have a smaller footprint, like much yung the previous presenter. Ayan. Although, try to verify this because uh, I remember the expo entry of uh, the Netherlands by, M by MBRDV for the Shanghai Expo. I think it's a vertical something um, showcasing the agricultural produce of the Netherlands. So uh, meron yung France din yata eh yung sumisumunod na expo. Yung parang naka waffle type, parang metal parasol type of building. Tapos may mga You need to look into that. If, if you want to connect the grocery with this this part uh, because I think it's more organic, the the idea is more fluid if you're able to connect it with the 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 context. That's the culture of people go in there like they go there to shop. So you might as well introduce that idea. Oh, interesting kasi ikaw lang yung mayroong grocery sa tabi. <laughs> so, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, at the end of yes, the day, it's your project. That's true. It's your project. But, uh, but, but, but uh, it is expected from you that uh, you're able to connect the, the development uh, with the context. All right. So, uh, okay. I mean, there are ways to connect the coffee idea with the context, which is that I got excited with the picture, the imagery that Cook presented. Like, you know, when from the grocery, you, you go to the mm -hmm. national to pick the, the produce, etc. It's kind of a, a very unique 
experience for anyone to have. So, uh, yeah. So, yung, I feel happy. Yung mga ganun yung in-aim natin with these projects, you know, um, you don't really have to necessarily draw it yet. You know, the way you describe a project, di ba, you feel that it's a unique project and then merong experience doon na exciting, di ba? Yung mga ganong ideas yung palang gusto natin na mag-come up from from you guys. From this, yung research nyo, um, you find a way to be able to create those kinds of ideas. Ayan. And melon at melon yan. Yeah, it's really all about the experience, guys. Like I was telling mm. everyone about so creative, creative typology, it's not about creating a unique building, but creating a new world uh, because I really think that all architectural styles have been explored and we already experienced all of it. But what if the, the architecture that we go to is an experience in itself and because it's also doing something that the, the purpose is uh, jack up to the next level. So uh, try to think along that line. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, thank you, Julian. Thank, thank you, sir. sir. Let's go to Anna. Okay. I thought it was me. Then we'll take a break after after Kirsten. Hello, ko Sir, si Houston next. <laughs> ah, Hello, po. Ako, ah, sige, Houston, ikaw muna po na. Hello, po. Okay, go ahead. Yuck na siya. The joke. <laughs> Ay, nag-share na si... Oh, this. Oh, sige, na, sige. Sige po. Sige po. Sige po. Okay. Battle Royale muna kayong dalawa. <laughs> But uh, we can really appreciate your drawing. Sayang naman. There's so many things to appreciate from your side section. So better if it's full screen. Yeah, it's nicely done. I like. Okay. So there's so many apps that we use, even though intuitively you know how to do it, like make it full screen, but you know, I still end up exploring the Google Drive or other apps for that matter. Gawin mo na lang, ano, um, yung sa share, pag nag-share screen ka, punta ka sa advanced, tapos piliin mo yung share portion of the screen, and then i-box mo yung site section na yun para full screen sa amin. Kahapon ko lang natutunan yun. <laughs> Nakasing up eh. Yeah. But mm-hmm. your generation, I think you were included in that generation. Uh, the familiarity will be more innate because they, they they were born to that kind of culture already. The technology and app. I mean, the more that siguro the kids now, no? whose uh, playtime mm. is all about iPad apps. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything for them will be intuitive. There you go. Yan. Abinokas na lang niya sa ano. Yeah. Okay, game. Yep. Looks so much better. Yeah. Malakas ba yung volume ko? Okay naman yung volume. Okay. Um, bali yung section ko po. Um, basically, yung full property ko is a basketball court sa isang place ng subdivision namin. Specifically, designated po siya sa mga residents for that place. And Obviously, surrounded siya with mostly residential property. And meron lang po yung private resource dun sa ngayon likod ng site, which is part pa rin po siya ng isang subdivision namin. And also, may ongoing construction din po near the site that it's actually not a kind of part na po ng subdivision. And technically, yung site po is located siya sa smallest space sa buong subdivision. So, last po yung people na gumagamit ng space to the point na nagmumaka na po siyang abandoned area where yun yung mga labor um, yung gamit na nila to add parking spaces 
For my college work, I specifically choose the date na hadis di siya within our area, which is now April 27. Then, hindi lang po ako ng time na night. Night, so maybe sunlight during 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. So, sinabayin ko lang po yung mga remote and auditory for that time. Then, and then I come up with this form. So, yung form ko po is to make a bit of a plain subject. Then, let's wait lang po. Let's open it. Para mas mamakinig po kami. Then, let's wait lang po. And, parang, ang mga subject. May specific na open for for the time that I do. So, sa gitna ng area din po, it's may opening para sa more natural ventilation space. Yung site po siya, sa likod niya yung part siya, medyo open space po siya. So, more use yung capacity so. Ito na po yung site model. So my comment is the same as the others. Like what is the next stage? And hopefully the second batch after our break will provide some better examples. Like how they move on from the research part to something very physical. Hopefully. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's a good start, Anna. So, uh, it's a good jumping point. Um, but again, you're working with Bamboo, another, I think Anna, I don't know, uh, Leia is also working on the same plant species. So, uh, it will be nice to compare. And um, definitely, it will be an architectural material for both of you, which is okay. Mm -hmm. It will be a matter of the difference in approaches and then also the, the products that you can develop to introduce a program. Misto ko yung building footprint niya. Interesting yung nakaganon. Naisip ko yung isang bahay ni David Chipperfield. Bahay niya mismo. Pambakasyonan. <laughs> parang ganon din siya. Parang medyo corner lot kasi naka parang pa corner yung road. So yung transition ng form ng building na tsaka yung building na isa. Parang na-combine niya together. Anyway, oh. I think okay then I like how the form looked like yung dun sa may ano. Yeah, I also like that. Uh, light carving. And then I think yung maganda yung mga sa presentation materials just that um, may onting tweak lang ako na mga nakikita like um yung mga headings mo i-align mo properly dun sa mga ibang text na meron kasi minsan naka-offset sila naka-indent or lagpas na indent. So, yeah, you just have to be sensitive on aligning those things so they look better. And even yung mga ibang words mo, you can, um, parang inconsistently, yung iba binubold mo, yung iba hindi mo binubold yung text. Tapos, mas maganda yung impact niya kung merong mga bolding ng mga ibang words. And a little bit bigger lang na font. Like, mga two-point increase sa font, font size. So, may make it look a little bit better magkaroon pa ng contrast dun sa text. Ayun, so, so, um, I don't know still paano gagawin yung sa bamboo and edible bamboo. Actually, nakalimutan ko yung ginawa ng batchmates ko nung they were studying bamboo, but, ayun, good luck dan. <laughs> okay, Houston, and then Kirsten, then break. Mr. H. Oh, then you can start now. Kita niyo na po ba, sir? Yes. So, um, since late and rally ako, eh, hindi ko nagawa yung first uh, activity, which is yung site inventory. But uh, this is my site. 
uh, it is near like St. Paul University um, and uh, Paco Christian University Elementary School. But this school is like, I don't know, um, Chinisira na. And I think they're trying to renovate it. And further onward is the uh, UP Manila, um, the UP Manila campus. So, um, ito yung um, se site section ko. Um, this is my site. Uh, it's a parking lot, pero owned siya ng Vista residences. Pero matagal na ata siyang hindi pa nagagamit. Or like, so, <clears throat> pati cars wala na rin dito. It's, like, it's just like a free space na lang. And uh, the whole site is covered with with trees. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> mama, sobrang ano nung shade niya. Uh, in, in terms of like kung maaraw. Since yun nga, maraming trees and all. So, uh, <clears throat> this is my this is my plant. Uh, uh, it is a uh, bulb onion. Mm, the binomial uh, nomenclature for this thing is um, al alumium al allium sepa. Wait lang. Uh, that was uh, on the next thing is like I have three figures here. Um, the first uh, figure depicts uh, all the external features of the plant such as the uh, inflorescence, bract, uh, leaf, uh, bulb, and modified stem and roots. So <clears throat> the figure two is like the more de detailed breakdown of the inflorescence and the, the bract. So yung ano siya is the pedicel, the flower, the bract, and the peduncle. Siya yung flower nung, nung whole onion. And wait lang. the third figure is yung onion mismo, the section of an onion. Tapos yung outer layer niya is like the tunic. Then yung scale is, the next is scale, tapos buds. Yung buds yung, yung whitish sa loob niya. And yung basal plate and yung root. So, uh, I have listed facts that I think worth knowing. Onions grow best outdoors, especially when you plant them in soil that is rich in nutrients. But uh, I researched about this, that they can grow anywhere, even uh, like uh, Hindi, well, well, ano na soil, parang, well fertilized na soil. Uh, yeah. Uh, if your soil is lacking in nutrients, you can also manually add nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. Onions are root crops, so they prefer to be planted underground. Um, they are also sensitive to daylight, so be sure not to plant them under direct harsh sunlight. Um, this root crop can grow up to a height of six to eight inches, uh, excluding the roots, and can weigh up to 92.21 grams. Um, yeah, on average, the length of the roots ranges from two to eight inches. Just according naman to Department of Agriculture, uh, the average SRP for onions in Metro Manila is between 93 pesos to <clears throat> 224. Uh, when it comes to nutritional value, onions are actually 89% water, so they don't really add much calories to a person di a person's diet. And so, fun fact, uh, every year, more than 90 million tons of onion is produced worldwide, and the number one producer of onion is China with 93.9 uh, 20, 20, million tons. So, so history uh, about onion. Mm, Romans believed that onions were the solution to various eye problems, toothaches, and even dog bites. So back back then, they like used it as like 
medicinal or herbal thing to cure to cure them. So based on the text collected from the Apicius, Apicius, which is like the collection of various Roman recipes, the Roman also used onions in var various culinary dishes. So yeah, just onions were also popular in Central Asia because of its flavor and how easy it was to store and transport. Transport. Okay, let me cut you lang just to point out something. While you are sharing the history, sorry, let me just turn on my camera. Uh, when you are sharing this history, uh, how is this useful for your project? Uh, by 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 knowing put the history, like uh, I can think about on how to properly use it uh, as a structure. Tulad po nung ano nung eh, kay, hindi siya need store. I like bawal siya like direct hard sunlight. Okay, but I don't think you need to go back in ancient history to know that. Ah. Ah, okay, po, sir. So you need to make your research focus on your goal. Ah, uh, okay, get it? So all of these things are very trivial, like the calories. I don't know how this is important to developing an architecture project. It's just prolonging the presentation. Uh, mm. and I'm not saying that uh, you don't know these things. It's just that um, I don't want you guys to waste your time in getting information that's not going to be useful in developing an architectural project. All right. Mm, okay, po, sir. All right, sige. Okay. okay so, anyway, uh, this is my model. Um, ito yung ito yung road, and this is the tropical suit, na near near the near my condo, and this is Saint Paul, Manila, on the right. There's mostly parking lot yung nasa gilid ng Saint Paul, Manila, since one way street lang naman to one way street lang siya so it's kind of big for one way street too and this is the actual so wait lang okay. wait wait so this one is my sun and wind carving uh i cut it into three uh, the first one is uh, 10 a.m. The second one is 12 p.m. And the third one is um, 3.57 p.m. So, uh, I, I want it like my natural sun, my, my natural lighting pa rin siya pag tingin mo sa baba. But then, hindi siya direct sunlight. Just like for like for the sake of the onion nga. Since, I, since bawal siya um directly uh directs a harsh sunlight so um the yung yung light rays magba bounce off na lang siya sa baba para 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 hindi ganun ka harsh yung yung light na makukuha mo from the sun then also the 12 pm too like may ano siya on thing bounce off para hindi siya uh hindi siya ganun ka harsh then the third one too, parang ganun rin siya. Then, it, since, since this one is the north, the north, facing north, sakto siya for like the, the cool breeze, the cool breeze na papasok from the northeast wind. And like yung hot breeze too, papasok siya din sa 3 p.m. na, na hole, or 3 p.m. Na, na, na hole. Yeah. That's all po. Sir. That's, I think it's the, what I like about uh, your presenta presentation, the idea about uh, the onion should not be exposed, directly exposed to the sun, and then you have the sun carving relating to that need. So uh, mm. I think you need to keep that in mind and always um, try to make your um, process um, directed towards your topic. Which mm. you did here, no? So uh, I I just wanted to point out point out earlier for for the other presentations to avoid that kind of mistake, especially when you reach thesis, mm. because we hear a lot of information that are unnecessary, 
It's trivial, mm. it's truthful, it's factual, but where was it used? Mm. You watch the presentation, the presentation, and those information were deemed useless. You know what I mean? It just became uh, like a, like a, an information segment. You, mm. you know what I mean? So we want to avoid that because it's yes, also okay. wasting our time. Okay, so yeah, Kyle, you have a comment? Um, actually, same lang ng comment for the audience information. Um, and then I wish the information ayon more of what you can do with the onion and the process you meron, di ba? What's so special about it? Other than you know, historically they've been doing this. But if you said historically they've been doing this, so I'm gonna do this because they've been doing this, that pa. Then you could have used that information, di ba? So um, other than that. Kasi na ano ako, na-distract ako kasi yung client ko nung mudit. <laughs> so yun na yung ano, yung sa sun carving. I think the sun carving and wind carving is good naman. Um, yung nangyari lang, it's just really a box form that you carved in. Um, you could also, um, may options din naman to be able to derive from the box form na you have different massing. But if you want to keep a boxing massing and you make the box interesting, then this is actually a way that you can do that. So, ayun. Tapos yung mga time, parang, parang medyo arbitrary lang ng 3.57. Parang, di ba na pag yung ginawang 4 o'clock? <laughs> 10.05. Di ba na ginawang 10 o'clock? <laughs> 12.01. <laughs> minsan, minsan ganun na ano, parang, wala lang, ano. Um, mas okay sana tignan kung naka-round up yung, yung core, yung number, di ba? Ayan, yun lang. <laughs> but I think that the most redeeming quality of this presentation is this aspect. Like, it's very specific mm-hmm. to the onion. So I want mm-hmm. I, I want everyone to uh, note this down, that uh, this particular sun carving is all about the, the, the onion. So later on, when you develop your forms or architectural uh, project, um, again, focus, focus on the goal mm-hmm. of the, the typology. Okay, thank you. So you could have looked at, diba? Sabi nga ni Shrek, you know, ogres have layers, onions have layers. <laughs> you could also look into, yeah, diba? Parang that's one physical aspect of your onion that you could look into. Maybe it could affect your architecture. Maybe it affected your sun carving that there are layers. I don't know. So, yung ganun na cohesiveness in the architecture, you know, it's a very important do that and you can do that when you actually take a look at what you have with all the data that you can gather about the onion mismo that you can use diba so yun yung ano yun i yun also yun. want to clarify that uh, the criticism is for your own good so that you won't repeat the same mistake mm-hmm. and there are also some instances actually a lot of instances when you present to business tycoons whose time mm-hmm. is very precious they are impatient you want to get to the point mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. You get it? So if, if they realize towards the end that you just prolong the presentation with trivial information, you know, you might end up pissing them. Do you get what mm-hmm. I mean? So yes, uh, but, sir. try to avoid that uh, uh, tendency. Mm-hmm. Unless yes, you know, it was useful towards the end. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sayang din kasi yung ano, ginawa mo pa ng board. Sabi natin, nag-research kay spent an hour about that. Tapos, he spent another hour to make the board. Diba? Parang, sayang naman yung two hours mo na sana tinulog mo na lang. <laughs> May mga ganun na ano. Um, kaya yung ginagawa ko pagka bago ako gumawa ng board um, or ng, yung presentation ko. Kasi diba usually you have one week. Parang for the first few days, I plan out what I want to produce na output. And then if okay yung story ko to be able to tell the output, iproproduce ko na lahat. Parang, diba, gagawa ka muna ng storyboard mo. And then, um, rather than ginawa mo yung information na yun, and then, ay, hindi ka pala gagamitin yung information, sayang naman yun, edi, sayang lang yung time na na-spend mo, di ba? So, best to, um, um, much, mas i-plan out mo better kung ano yung pwede pang magamit on that, and paano a-affect yung architecture later on. So, ayan. Thank you, you start. Okay, let's go to the last for this first batch, Kristen. Kung ano, kung two meters lang, Hi, sir. Hello, how are you? Recuperating. I used to take. Yes. Okay, 
What sickness did you get? Sir, viral lang. Ah, okay. Hindi naman, yeah. not the big C, ah, COVID. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Are you able to present? Oh, no. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Uh, so it will be fine. It, I can naman. Sige, take it easy. Basta present whenever you can. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, sir, is it seen na? Or yeah, yeah, should yeah. I full screen? Okay naman. Yeah, maganda na yan. Okay. So, this is my lot. Um, The current lot size is 100, approximately 1,300 1, square meters. But I'm only going to be taking a portion within it, which is 600 square meters. So... Um, these are the plant requirements. The plant I chose is a coconut plant. So um, to propagate the seeds, uh, the plant has to, there has to be enough space um, underneath the plant so that the roots can grow. And then the approximate size of once it's being transferred to actual soil is 50 by 50 cm in diameter for a hole. And then it can only be transferred after seven months. So this is the plant life cycle. So after planting, it takes three to six months for um, the roots and the initial plant to sprout. And then it takes five to seven years for the coconut tree to be fully grown and produce flowers. And another nine to 12 months for it to actually produce actual fruits. So these are the different um, possible planting systems um, to yield the maximum or best amount of coconuts. So they have different types. Um, the reason for this is because it's common for co coconuts to be planted um, with other plants. So they usually plant it with plants like coffee or abaca. So when harvesting coconuts, it takes six months for the flowers to mature into actual fruit. And then if you want to um, get the coconuts for the water or yeah, the coconut water, um, it should be harvested between the seven and nine month period after, um, it, after it turned into the fruit. And if you want it for the copra, the coconut meat or the milk, it should be harvested at 10 to 13 months. So the annual plant yield is approximately 14 bunches. Um, this is because coconuts grow um, sporadically. So approximately every month, you'll be able to harvest one fresh, um, newly grown set, a bunch of coconuts. So each bunch can grow approximately five to 15 nuts. And so, and then each nut has approximately 80 to 90 grams of fiber, which can be extracted from the coconut husk. So other plant products from the coconut is you can use the leaves to create baskets. And then for the fruit, you can get the actual fruit, the meat of the fruit, or it can be turned into copra or um, fiber, which is used for rope. So another one is charcoal. Um, the coconuts are crushed into chips, which then produce charcoal bri briquettes, which can be used for food production. So this is the process. The coconut shells are placed into a machine that crushes into the chips. And the chips are fed into a drum kiln, which then, um, removes all moisture and heats up the coconuts until it all that's left is um, the charcoal product. So this is my site model. Um, the space in the center, the black part, is the 600 square meter area that I will be using. So this is the site section. Um, what I did was I cut it at the front of the lot to sort of show what 
since my lot is at an intersection, this is what most people would first be seeing if you come in from the lot, from the corner. So my lot is in the center area, the one with a lot of trees, because right now um, it's overrun by plants. Um, I've tried to check what the plants are, but then no one actually knows. And then this is the sun carving. Yeah. So what I did for the sun carving was I got the hottest day in the year, which is approximately June 21. And then I got the coldest day also, which is around January 21. So what I did with it was I cut out um, the time I got, I chose the times 10, 12, and 4 since 4 o'clock is at sort of a point where the sun is not so hot anymore since the hottest point is 3 o'clock. What, and then I got 12 because it's the, it has the most sun exposure. And then I got 10 o'clock, so, the, uh, which is the time before the sun um, starts to heat up. Because um, it's the best way to grow coconut plants is they need constant sun exposure, but then not constant heat. So what I wanted to do was to increase the amount of sun exposure without really um, having to place them under direct heat from the sun. So the result of my sun carving is this. This. Okay. Interesting nung sun carving. Actually, gusto ko yung... Okay na ba? Gusto ko yung presentation ng sun carving yung may dotted. Kitang-kita yes, mo yung pag-carve. Okay. ba? Ayan, no? you can really see the pag-carve. Even yung line weight's more very good. Like the thick outline and then the thin inside detail lines. And you could see the dotted lines. Lalo na yung nasa first massing mo. You could see merong kang inner angle na nilagay because of the dotted line. So one. I think you really Can we go to that line that the uh, child is referring to? Ito, this one. Ito, sir. Teka lang, iyan ako. Annotate ko. Yung pagka-drawing niya, even this massing, you could see that it's ah, folded yeah. inward, di ba? Ang, ang kapal naman nung pangit naman noon. And you could see that it's folded inward, di ba? It looks really nice. Even ito, kita mo how it's cut through. It's very nicely done. So, I beg to disagree. The, just kidding. No, for line, <laughs> no, um, line types, line <laughs> weight, perfect for this one. But when it comes to the process, can we go to the previous slide? I, this is just a personal preference, but if this is your style, it's it's okay. It's acceptable, na mano. The sun carving. Let's go to the sun carving. Yung maraming ano iterations. Yan. Eh, makapal. Find the outline makapal. to take. Yeah. Yan, makapal masyado. Okay. Maganda yung close-up eh. Kitang-kita mo eh. Yung close-up, just right. Very elegant proportions yes. of yes. The, the thickness of the line types. So, uh, maybe you just need to adjust it. Baka, baka kasi you just, I don't know, maybe you resize it and then without changing the thickness. Anyway, nasa illustrator naman yan eh. Yung isa, Back mo nga yung may process ka nung coconut husk tapos nilalagay sa machine. Yan. Just be very careful, okay? The architecture is not about putting these machines in the building and accommodating yeah. the machines. I beg to okay? disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Since parents to care, if parents to care, alam nyo naman yan. Nilalagay nyo Yes, yes. Dito. Yes, yeah, so and it's super... really nice to deconstruct how this could be your architecture. Ito, how this is architecture mo. Yes. Paano yung process na to, interior architecture. So, yun so yung far, have to be, ano. So far, amongst those who didn't present last week, this is actually advanced. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, happy, yeah. I'm happy that she presented a lot of ideas that you could lose. Yes, I the agree. Process. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe my, que my question is, uh, where will you plant the coconut trees? You only have 600 square meters. 
Uh, sir, okay, I have here. Hala, hala, hala. Sir, so I sort of wanted it in this area. Ilan lang Is yan. my mouse Tapos, here? Or... Although I, 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 I'm impressed with the information that you have about the how many coconuts, how many bunches of nuts you can produce. Uh, I'm not sure how many you're thinking of. And I'm sure not not all the coconut trees will be able to um, will not be able to produce well. Uh, I'm sure some of them will also die. I don't know. Uh, so, how much coconut trees are you envisioning to to plant? Sir, my current is around twenty, I think. Okay, try to maximize it because you only have six hundred square meters. And like what I was telling everyone about the sun carving, that this is not final yet. Maybe your next one of your next steps is to find out the best form to sort of maximize uh, the number of coconuts. And I'm very happy with uh, the different planting systems that you created that could also influence that. And um, maybe that's the next form. Yes. Then the, the succeeding form is a combination of the sun carving and the, the, the optimal, optimal uh, usage of the property, of the optimal use of form so that you can have the optimal number of coconut trees. Okay, did you get okay, it? Okay, sir. Okay, and it, is, that, is that clear? Yeah, sir. And then uh, anyway, you have the information about the depth. Of yes, the sir. I mean, you can already somehow have a clue how many levels you'll be able to produce. But essentially, a maximum natin is four story because by code, you need an elevator for four or five story and up. Uh, so yeah, so limit guys, the, pro the building project to four story building. And then uh, minimum of three. Para lang, so just to equalize the, okay. the level of difficulty. Uh, you have other questions, Kyle? No, I don't have any other questions. Okay, uh, good work, Kristen. I'll see you yes. guys in 45 minutes. Di pa kasi mag lunch. So, uh, but let's not wait for the 520 anymore so that we can finish earlier also. All right? Sige. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna provide another link later on. I, I need to restart lang my computer. Okay? I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, bye.